1949. Jackson Pollock. Is he the greatest living painter in the United States? Chaos, damn it. Jackson Pollock's abstractions stump experts as well as laymen. Each one of his pictures is part of himself. But what kind of man is he? Telegram to Time magazine. No chaos, damn it. Damn busy painting, as you can see by my show coming up. I think the 1950 show was different from all others because it contained the first truly wall-sized pictures that Pollock had painted since the Peggy Guggenheim mural. The painter Fritz Bultmann once said to me it was like being in a cathedral. into that room and not get some sort of a sense of what it was about. Don't forget various artists were responding, people like Clifford Still, Bonnie Newman, Mark Rothko. He must have picked up what that show meant. I found New York terribly depressing after my show. And nearly impossible. I really hit an all-time low with depression and drinking. Last year, I thought, at last, I'm above water from now on in. But things don't work out that easily, I guess. And he wasn't always the simplest person to live with. I was very aware of that. And uh, when I'd bring it up, because I was losing patience, he, the only thing he'd ever say to me is, he never said it wasn't so, nor did he say, I'll stop it, you know. Uh, he'd say, uh, think of it as a storm, it'll go by. In a painterly sense, I know what he was confronting, but his inner most struggle I never knew outright that if there was a struggle there's no question about it for instance he was alcoholic and battling that damn scene he wasn't pretending it didn't exist nineteen fifty one I've had a period of drawing on canvas in black with some of my early images coming through. I think the non-objectivists will find them disturbing, and the kids who think it's simple to splash a Pollock out.
Well, I think that the despair that uh, Jackson had was similar to the despair that many other artists have had through history and contemporarily with him. Only that in his case, it was uh, like from his boyhood. It was something that haunted him and uh, his shyness, he wanted to cover it up with uh, rudeness. I remember once he, he said to me, uh, I feel like an oyster without a shell. I spoke to him about seeing the Beckett play, Waiting for Godot, and I raved about it. It was such a new experience, a wonderful thing to see, that I uh, instilled a desire in him to go see it. And he did go to see it. And when he came back from the theater, he said, I had to walk out on it. He couldn't take it, he said. It was so intense and real for him. The Champ, Jackson Pollock at 43, the heavyweight champion of abstract expression, shuffled into the ring at Manhattan's Sidney Janis no, Gallery. looking for beauty or worrying about what socially relevant message is being conveyed. Too much of an air of baked macaroni about the some gruff, of his pattern. Turgid, sporadically vital reeling. As if the artists had been playing with paints and got carried away. Well, the fame that came to Jackson at that time, uh, you might call it more notoriety. It was a kind of uh, uh, singling him out as some kind of a freak. Jack the Dripper, as Time magazine called him, and so forth. Pollock the tough guy, the murderer of art. All of this makes wonderful copy. And I think that the news media attach themselves much more to the personality, the man, and the technique than to any concern for the quality and character of the art itself. What is the public image? Is that of a wild man? Is that of an alcoholic or a person that you'd want to stay away from? I would say he was desperate. He was questioning himself as well as the art he did and everything he stood for. I think a public image was a very natural one for the public to have because he was a sensational man, uh, particularly when he drank. He went rather wild and did strange things. And uh, so he was a man to avoid. I avoided him if I could <clears throat> at those times. If you said the wrong to, uh, thing to him, he might get violent. So he would come in in a rather dramatic way, and I always visualized him as having two pistols, like a cowboy coming in and disrupting the whole place. And uh, he would go up to someone like Franz or Bill and say, you fucking whore, you think you're a painter? By 1953 and four, we could really say Pollock's art is in crisis. He made pictures which were very problematic, and I think he recognized them as such. I knew he wasn't painting, and I knew the pressure on him, and knew that people were waiting for paintings, and that that, I could imagine, would be a most dreadful situation to be in. And though he came back late at night, he came in in a rage, saying that, what do they want from me? What do they want? I've already done it. In my opinion, he was just going through a bad period. That if it, if it had been left alone, and if it, the tragedy hadn't happened, he might have picked up and gone off to other paintings. There was, you know, there's no question about it. When he was like that and got into the car, I feared an accident. On August 11th, 1956, Patrolman Earl Finch received a radio dispatch from town police headquarters reporting an automobile accident on the Springs Fireplace Road. Investigation report. Proceeded to the scene arriving at 2220 hours and found a 1950 Oldsmobile convertible operated by owner Jackson Pollock. Observed an injured woman who was removed to hospital, a male body and a female body. Removed bodies to funeral home. Vehicle apparently traveling at a high rate of speed while rounding a curve went off the road. Operator losing control. Vehicle skidded, collided with two small trees, reversed its direction and turned end over end backwards, coming to rest upside down. Accident, suicide, or homicide? Specify. Accident. It seems to me that the modern painter cannot express this age. The airplane, the atom bomb, the radio, 
in the old forms of the Renaissance or any other past culture. Each age finds its own technique. Next week, join us for a retrospective on artists Sarshal Gorky and Franz Klein. That's one week from tonight at this same time. concept that he had was strictly Victorian. His mind, I think, was around 1890 to 1910. His studio dark, really. He liked nighttime. You could see him in gaslight. What he was doing, I didn't think he would get anywhere, but, you know, the flower in the lapel. He had a the, very barren uh, loft down there, I'll tell you. All the collar of his coat, you know. And Slept on newspaper. The fedora. He was genuine. You have to like the fellow. He had a mustache, and he always had a twitch to it like a guy that was up to something. Delicious is the word I would think of for his sense of fun. You could say he was a twinkle. Oh, and then he worked.